Hi, biology people. Uh, I just want to help you pound out this last bit of classification on this invertebrate sheet. Here's something that you'll be able to use on quizzes and tests and whatnot. And it'll probably help you answer some of the questions that you're doing in the book, I hope, at least, um, as you're doing those pounding out the last bits here of chapter 16. So I'm just going to go through all of chapter 16 right now and we'll fill this in and then you can kind of backfill it as you do your reading and notes and the quizzes and stuff we got uh, a couple weeks left and i want you to have the information before um before we get too far so anyway i think i'll post this probably late monday or tuesday you can fill it in as as necessary but you're definitely going to want to have this available to you um when we do our final exams and lab and that kind of stuff all right let's get into it okay chapter 16 um, classification schemes have uh, changed uh, uh, over time we already know that when we did our thing about uh, philo code and all that classification stuff uh, even the pie chart that was at the beginning of our handouts that stuff has changed as far as the numbers go and so We'll have here that uh, in phylum arthropoda, the joint footed animals. There are over a million known species, and there are literally thousands of new species that are discovered every year. And this is the biggest of the on the pie chart, so it would make sense that this one's growing uh, a lot too. And watch Destin in the rainforest, all that kind of stuff, discovering new species, etc. Characteristics of things that are in the arthropoda. Uh, they have exoskeletons and their muscles are on the inside and the muscles pull on the exoskeleton on the outside. You can see on the joint of, of crustaceans that they, their muscles are exposed. If you're ever eating crab legs or something, you pop it open, you eat the muscles. But that, yeah, anyway. Jointed appendages and then body segments, either two or three. If they've got three segments, it's head, thorax, and abdomen. If it's two, it's the cephalothorax. Those two get jumped into one cephalo is the root for head and then abdomen like uh, two would be like a spider they have open circulatory systems with a dorsal heart dorsal if you remember our, our word parts dorsal means along the back so um, for us our backbone is back there and our hearts in front for them their heart is behind they don't have a backbone they have uh, they have nervous system and whatnot but it's it's ventral. Their nervous system is on their belly side. So how does that work? An open circulatory system. Their their heart is inside their a body cavity. It collects blood and then it pumps that blood and like bathes their internal organs with it. This is part of the reason why when you step on a bug, it's really splashy and gooey and there's a lot of juice because uh, all that stuff on the inside is just being bathed with blood. It's not going through a bunch of tubes to those organs. It's just being um, pumped over them, then collected on the other side of them before it's pumped back to the heart, which pushes it back across all the stuff. So that's open. It's not in closed tubes. It's all open. It makes it very wet when you squish them or when they run into your window. And then again, their nervous system on the ventral or the belly side. Going on to 16.2, they have in there subphylum crustacea. This is uh, kind of a new new classification scheme it used to be just like one section all by itself and so we've got a subphylum and then we get to classes all under crustaceans now, i don't think class insecta is under that it's under something else um first malacostraca which is an old old use of the word uh, today they might just call it the crustaceans you've got crabs lobsters crayfish or crawdads depending on what part of the country you're from uh, krill and shrimp, all very similar to each other. We got here, uh, we ordered some crayfish for a dissection next week. They're inside. If I open it up, it's going to smell right now, and I don't want to smell for the next week and a half. So there's, I think there's like 10 crawdads in there. Maybe some of you know where to get those too. But these ones are dead, and they're preserved, and they even are singly injected so we can see some of the stuff inside of them better. You're going to be watching the Smart Every Day on the Mantis. Murder shrimp, which is a crustacean, right? Bam! Killing stuff. So crabs, lobster, krills, and shrimp. Uh, we can tuck in there, then also subphylum uh, Chalicerata, 
And then underneath that will be class Arachnida, the spiders, but not just spiders. Scorpions. Scorpions have two body segments as well. Uh, spiders, ticks, and mites, they have two body segments and four pairs of walking legs. And typically, they also have four pairs of simple eyes, though the uh, tailless whip scorpion apparently only has three sets of eyes, as you'll see in the video. Okay, ticks little head big body usually and then mites are like really tiny and they're usually kind of red or orange they're like little spiders um you usually see them you turn a rock over you saw all kinds of them there no antenna or mandible so um they don't have the same type of way of picking up signals from their environment as maybe insects do um mandibles not big chewy things except for shelob and and family and whatnot in the Lord of the Rings. They have, apparently, they get big mandibles there. Anyway, so usually they just, uh, yeah. Respi respiration, if you're filling out one of those um, life process charts, respiration is by a system of things. It's kind of like gills, but not exactly. They're called book lungs. They have a bunch of these layers of tissues that, that um, pick up oxygen. So, um, I don't know a whole lot about those, but you can look them up if you want to. They're called book lungs and arachnids. Again, we're talking about spiders or ticks or mites or scorpions. And as I said before, four pairs of simple eyes, usually. Wide variety in here, lots of different sizes of these things, big and small and otherwise. Um, had a girl that stepped on a scorpion at recess one time. Always a good idea to keep your shoes on, especially if you live in the desert. Almost stepped on some uh, in cross country races too. I just to jump over them because they were sitting right there in the middle of the, of the course. That wasn't that cool. And I really, really hate spiders. I really hate spiders. When I was a kid, maybe sometime in the 90s, there was a movie called Arachnophobia where a whole town is like inundated with these big, nasty, poisonous spiders. You want to look that up on YouTube, huh? Or, or Netflix. I just watched Outbreak. Boy, it wasn't that fun. Underneath that as well, um, we also have uh, centipedes and millipedes, chylopoda and diplopoda. I think you could recognize that diplo part having to do with two. Uh, centi means 100 and milli means 1,000, though those are just, those are just uh, kind of giving us an idea of like a lot and a lot more. But the centipedes and the millipedes, they got pictures in your book. There is that one um, facet thing on page 378. And the main thing is how many pairs of legs per body segment. So centipedes are just one set of legs, one on each side coming out from each body segment. Millipedes have two little legs coming out from each body segment. One of these is poisonous, one of these is not. You need to go look that up and see which one it is. And if you ever go hiking in fairly wet places, you probably see centipedes and millipedes. Uh, they're not super exotic. Uh, it's just that you usually don't go to places where you're going to find them. Oregon trails, that's where we go. Then uh, last uh, one is class insecta. Uh, if you would like to be a studier of insects, if you think insects are just fascinating, then you are an entomologist. And again, one of Dustin's friends there as they're hiking through the uh, Amazon rainforest was an entomologist. and He's got entomology books. Is always coming out with new things because they're always discovering new species, as you'll see in those videos. Uh, and the guy studies like their mechanisms for how they jump and um, yeah, just the physics behind that kind of stuff, the kinematics behind it. It's pretty fascinating stuff. So I, I'm not super into bugs, but I do think it's interesting the way that, uh, for instance, a, a damselfly or dragonfly's wing, wings work. Um, has a lot to do with their breathing and their circulation and all that kind of stuff. They are they're fearfully and wonderfully made too. Characteristics of class insecta: three pairs of walking legs, typically wings usually present, though not all. Um, some of them have their wings hiding underneath uh, hard outer coverings like beetles. Some of them they're just out there. Some of them like ants don't have wings, though some ants do. Uh, again, these are just typical characteristics, but there's a wide variety, and a lot of them are classified by the types of wings that they have, as we'll see on the next page. Three body segments, and typically one pair of antenna or uh, feelers and whatnot. 
mouth parts, they can be classified kind of that way. You can have chewing mouth parts like grasshoppers or locusts. Think Joel chapter two. Um, sponging flies have this this kind of like thing that sticks out and they just kind of go pat, pat, pat. That's why you're always seeing them just getting on stuff that's wet and yucky and just patting in and soaking up stuff. That's why they're kind of gross. They kind of like put their mouths on everything. They're like two-year-olds. Siphoning like butterflies. They've got all looped up and then they'll they'll stretch it out and they've got a little a little ridge in there where they can like slurp up the juicy yummy from inside flowers. So butterflies and, and moths work that way. That thing is called a proboscis. Same thing that is what we would call a, the snout on an elephant. And then uh, piercing. Mosquitoes have like a little needle point kind of thing and they can jam it in there, drool on you to keep you bleeding, suck up whatever they like to, and then extract, right? Piercing mouth parts. Moving on to respiration and circulation. In terms of respiration, a lot of uh, bugs have a bunch, a series of holes or tubes on their side of them called spiracles. And then as, um, as the, the bug uses its muscles, it, it causes their body cavity to squeeze and to relax. It's basically like an accordion. That's how they breathe. So there's little openings. If you squeeze it, the air goes out. As it expands again, the air comes in. So they just use their regular movement to help them breathe. We've got a diaphragm. They've got circular muscles that are causing their, um, their body to squeeze. And it squeezes out air and to expand as they relax and it brings air in. So those are called spiracles. And then circulation, again, they have an open system. The heart pumps blood over the organs. And then it has a series of these special tubules called Malpighian tubules inside that uh, are kind of like their, it's kind of like how our kidneys and what uh, and liver works. They, they are able to use uh, differences in concentration of gases and compounds to extract nitrogenous waste from their body. Nitrogen is usually the leftover stuff after you've eaten or after you breathe. Uh, it's the byproducts of metabolism and it's the stuff that your body wants to get rid of. So that's how they do it. That's how they are going to excrete their waste. They got to draw that stuff out using these specialized structures, Malpighian tubules, and then and then that's excreted. And they, they can get rid of it. It's part of circulation though. Really it would be under excretion. As a series of tubes. Um, orders, at least some of the chief orders, there are lots of them. Um, again, there, I think a lot of these are based on their wing structure. So this first one, Hymenoptera. Hymena is just a thin tissue layer. It's usually see-through. Um, that would be membrane wing. Membrane wing. So bees, wasps, and flying ants, they have a see-through wing the membrane, Lepidoptera, scale wing, butterflies and moths. So I remember the videos that we watched on, I suppose it was on, yeah, it was butterfly wings and Destin looked at them super close and how they're attached and all that kind of stuff. So magic fairy dust. Uh, Coleoptera, sheath wings, beetles, they have a covering over their backs. You can tell a beetle because they got a line right down the center of their backs. And then when they go to fly, they lift those sheaths, so like the crunchy parts, and then they got these uh, the wings that pop out underneath. They're usually kind of loud, right? Beetles. So they go flying around, and then when they land, then they tuck in their soft wings and they cover them with their hard with their hard sheath covering. So beetles fall into that category. Coleoptera. You got any optera or P T E R A always means wing. And then we're just looking at this word part in the front to determine what kind of wing it is. Next, uh, diptera. And here we're thinking like diplo or die. Two wings. Gnats, mosquitoes, and flies. Two wings. And then orthoptera. Ortho means straight. Straight wings like grasshoppers and cockroaches. Cockroaches. Disgusting. And I've slipped in another one in here. Odonata. As our dragonflies and our damselflies. Lots and lots of Smart Everyday videos about dragonflies series. In fact, you can do the deep dive on that if you so choose. They are the fighter pilots of the insect world. Those are all the insect orders that I'm going to hit. There's probably more in the book, and there's definitely more 
out there that we don't know about, but a lot of them are, again, classified based on what types of wings that they actually do have. You can go forever onto smaller uh, classifications, but um, yeah, just look at the world around you. Uh, Bethan found some weird type of insect growing on um, <clears throat> on the eucalyptus, on those little white dot things. It's a psyllid, which is kind of like a fly or a wasp. So um, yeah, maybe you're finding interesting observations like that about your plants, that there are certain bugs that are associated with them too. Uh, keep working on that. And again, this is just to kind of flesh things out here for you. You you will be able to use this when you take your final exam. I suggest that you um, that you have it very clear and you've looked over it. But there you are, 16 minutes of your life. Hopefully that helps in your uh, in your studies. Bye. See you later.